We're going to need a bigger boat for this week's episode, as we take a look at the basics on the Savage Sharktacons. The Sharktacons were created for 1986's The Transformers the Movie. They were the servants of the evil alien Quintessons, an army of identical, voracious, simple-minded robots who transformed into shark-like monsters, used by the Quintessons to execute their victims by eating them, in the style of criminals being thrown to the lions in ancient Rome. This was the fate that almost befell Autobots Hot Rod and Cup when they ran afoul of the Quintessons, until the Dinobots came to their aid, and the imposing Dinobot leader Grimlock convinced the Sharktacons to turn on the Quintessons instead. However, the rebellion proved to be short-lived, as the subsequent third season of the Transformers cartoon would show the Sharktacons back under Quintesson control again, serving not just as executioners, but as warriors and commandos sent into battle and on missions. Like most of the new characters created for the movie, the Sharktacons were designed for animation first by artist Floro Deary, whose drawings were then used as the basis for a toy the opposite of how Transformers characters were normally designed at the time, as the toy usually came first. The toy was sold as a Decepticon, despite the Sharktacons not actually being a part of that faction in media. Specifically, it was marketed as an individual Sharktacon named Gnaw, though the commercial advertising the toy made clear that the figure was really one of the Transformers line's first deliberate army builders a toy kids could buy multiples of to build up their own Sharktacon swarm. The Sharktacons didn't appear in the Marvel comic book published in the US, outside of one out-of-continuity issue that adapted the cartoon episode, the big broadcast of 2006, but they did feature in stories exclusive to the United Kingdom's version of the series, appearing exactly as they had in the film and cartoon, servants of the Quintessons who almost devoured the junkie on Rekgar after he was captured by the aliens. And indeed, the Sharktacon's role in the world of the Transformers has remained pretty much unchanged in the 35 years since their introduction. When the Quintessons turn up in a new Transformers series, the Sharktacons will usually follow, in comics, animation, video games, and more. Some notable stories have included Dreamwave Productions comic books, which gave Gnaw his first appearance in media as an individual, introducing him as a damaged Sharktacon separated from his pack, who was befriended by the young Autobot Wheelie. And IDW Publishing's comics, which featured packs of Sharktacons over which the Quintessons had lost control, including a swarm of wild Sharktacons encountered by Megatron on the planet Junkion, and a huge army of them that had been enslaved by the Junkions themselves, who used them to attack Earth until the Decepticon Soundwave convinced the Sharktacons to turn on their oppressors. And there have been several new Sharktacon toys based closely on their original designs, including figures released in 2016's Titan's Return toy line, and in 2021 as part of the Studio series line both sold, like the original, under the individual name Gnaw. But as with most everything in the Transformers universe, there have been a few new takes on the Sharktacons over the years as well. The first was in 2004's Transformers Energon, which used the name Sharktacon to refer to an individual Transformer rather than a species. Energon Sharktacon was a Decepticon who transformed into a shark-themed warship who had a personality so cruel and personal hygiene so bad that even his fellow Decepticons avoided him. He didn't appear in the Energon cartoon, but was briefly featured in the Energon comic book. An exclusive recolor of the Energon Sharktacon toy in classic Sharktacon colors was released through official convention Botcon in 2010. Sold in a three-pack, these toys represented upgraded versions of the Quintesson Sharktacons, led into battle by the Sharktacon general, Skybite. Now, in the original animated series, the Quintessons were the creators of the Transformer race, so it was taken as read that they had created the Sharktacons as well. 
However, in the 21st century, Transformers lore has grown and changed, and today virtually all new series depict Primus, the God of Light, as the Transformers creator. So with the Quintessons no longer treated as the makers of robot life, it became necessary to give the Sharktacons a new origin in the 2004 guidebook Transformers The Ultimate Guide which introduced the idea that the Sharktacons were the native inhabitants of another planet that the Quintessons had conquered and enslaved. It would be a decade before this idea would be explored in any other media, but eventually the 2014 Transformers Prime tie-in novel Retribution dived more deeply into this new modern origin, establishing that the Sharktacons were Transformers from a Cybertronian colony on the ocean planet of Aquatron. When Aquatron was invaded by the Quintessons, they brainwashed the Sharktacons into their loyal servants, turning them into an army that they then used to launch an attack on Cybertron, led by the one Sharktacon with free will, the great general Tyrannicon. The invasion was thwarted when Megatron was able to obtain the device the Quintessons were using to control their army, an artificial Sharktacon matrix, and integrated it into his body giving him command of the Sharktacons and transforming him into a Sharktacon-like form, a figure of which was released in the Prime toyline. Seeking to regain control of his army, Tyrannicon soon wrestled the Matrix away from Megatron, but he and it were then destroyed by the giant rampaging Quintesson city bot, the Hydratron, leaving the surviving Sharktacons finally free from control. A handful of Decepticon-allied Sharktacons would later appear in Prime's 2015 sequel series Robots in Disguise, including the pirate Hammerstrike and the scientist Ragebite, who transformed from shark-like robot modes into submarines. The idea of the Sharktacons hailing from their own planet was also featured in the Transformers Cyberverse cartoon in 2019. In this series, the Sharktacons' world was destroyed under unknown circumstances, and the surviving Sharktacons split into three rival gangs, the Fins, the Tails, and the Snouts, who fought for occupation of the chunks of planet that remained. After stumbling into their territory, Autobots Bumblebee, Hot Rod, and Cheetor were pulled into their turf war, but were able to bring the fighting to an end by using the power of the life-giving Allspark to restore the Sharktacons' world. However, when they next appeared, the Sharktacons had been subjugated by the Quintessons, and served as the aliens' foot soldiers during their invasion of Cybertron. A figure of the Sharktacon's leader, Lord Gnaw, was released in the Cyberverse toyline, as well as a multi-pack of three smaller Sharktacon figures. They haven't changed much over the years, but whether Quintesson slaves or their own independent bots, a single individual or a ravenous swarm, the Sharktacons will always make the Transformers afraid to go back in the water. And those are the basics on the Sharktacons. If you've enjoyed this look at Transformers history and lore, don't forget to subscribe for more. You can get early access to new videos if you support the show on Patreon, and you won't want to miss the next one because it's episode number 150, Megatron.